Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your yeah, boy, Prof. Chofen. We've not do, we've not done a Lemino video in a while, so let's fuck it, fuck it, let's do it. This is top ten facts. Death, death, death. Just let me know. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, saved. This year, some 57 million people are expected to cease Seriously? existence and oh, revert shit. back to their That's natural so state of non-existence, commonly defined as death. Roughly two-thirds will die of a mysterious and as of yet incurable disease known as aging. Well, technically and medically speaking, old age is not in and of itself lethal, but it nonetheless weakens your body so as to make you less capable of combating that which is. Nevertheless, death as a result of age-related conditions is clouded in mystery as we have yet to discern precisely why we age. Current understanding implies no singular element commands the aging process, but rather a combination of multiple interconnected factors. For example, the yeah, well, I thought it was just because our our cells start uh, replicating slower and shit, and you know. Limits imposed by telomeres on cell division implies obsolescence may be programmed into our DNA. Manipulation of specific genes in other animals and organisms can have drastic effects on the aging process. Furthermore, numerous studies have evinced that calories accelerates aging and thus less food could potentially extend longevity. So stop eating and you'll live forever. <laughs> Who eats a burger that way on the Wait, opposite side to live forever ah you fucking cunt what is wrong with you brother what is wrong with you hey by the way am i the only person that nibbles on the side of the burger until it becomes like a small pot and just shove it in your mouth that's how i eat my burgers by the way yeah, that's fucking dope yeah. who eats a burger that way. On the opposite side of the spectrum, aging may simply be a result of accumulative damage and waste. While the human body is capable of maintaining and repairing itself, the processes responsible are not infallible. Over time, an accumulation of separately insignificant failures may collectively become significant so as to sporadically degrade various bodily functions. If gerontologists do manage to isolate the precise nature of aging, we may one day be able to decelerate, prevent, or even reverse the process. Hopefully. Hanging has been a common method of both suicide and homicide ever since the invention of ropes and homicide. human necks. Today, <laughs> hanging is primarily associated with hanging from a noose, but the word may also describe crucifixion, impalement, or just a general state of suspension upon death. Ugh. At some point, or more likely over an extended period of time, coroners and others remarked that male hanging victims often died with priapism, which is a medical way of saying they frequently died with an erection. In fact, it is the belief of some historians that not one but two poles were erected upon the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and that some artistic renditions of his divine likeness was more accurately hung than others. Though thy holy loins was frequently covered with so Jesus got a boner when he died. Rapes like the Renaissance version of pixelization, so the state of his majesty can merely be inferred. In any case, this discovery gradually evolved into a treatment for erectile dysfunction as non-lethal strangulation evolved into a... So, if you want, if you're having problem getting hard to just, you know... Nick yourself. Treatment for erectile dysfunction as non-lethal strangulation <laughs> produces the same effect, which in turn evolved into erotic asphyxiation. The exact physiological cause is not entirely clear, but the general inhibition of normal brain activity due to pressure or injury to the brain or spinal cord appears to be responsible. The fear of death is known as thanatophobia, and fearing the end uh, of our Thanos. existence can be so overwhelming that many seek it. And th I think this, just like most other words that we use for a lot of shit, came from the Greek thanatos or some shit. You know, I think it was the Reaper or whatever. I don't remember my Greek, um, you know, gods and shit that much. But I think that's semi accurate. Any explanation that promises continuation in place of termination. In other words, an afterlife. 
As far as science is concerned, death is the cessation of brain activity followed by natural decomposition of the body. One could argue that death is merely the absence of life, much like a shadow is the absence of light. But who is this science to tell us what to believe when we could ask those brought back to life after death? Between 10 to 20% of cardiac arrest survivors recall near-death experiences, memories from when they were clinically dead and thus unconscious. Revived persons often report similar experiences, such as a strong sense of peace, love and happiness, the perception of one's dead body from an outside perspective, a review of one's life experiences, interactions with deceased loved ones or supernatural entities, and a light at the end of a dark tunnel. Studies have found that these experiences are largely culture dependent. For example, Christians are more likely to perceive angels, while Hindus are more likely to perceive gods of the underworld. Entities who escort the deceased towards an afterlife are known as psychopumps. But you are neither more nor less likely to have a near-death experience just because you are religious, as NDEs by atheists and others are just as common. Many find comfort in these reports as they may serve as affirmation of a life beyond, but it's worth point- I see that you tried very hard to make sure you encompass all cultures here. Well, my Asian motherfucker is there, okay? Racist. I'm joking. It's a joke. Pointing out that clinical death is not the same as what most of us perceive as death. The reason you can be revived when clinically dead is that while your heart and breathing may have ceased, your brain is still active. It is only once your brain activity stops that you are legally dead and no one has ever blind. returned from this stage of complete cessation. Yet. While humans may be stuck with pathetic mortal bodies, some animals have transcended this futile existence and exhibit biological immortality. One such creature is the immortal Hydra. Hydras are tiny freshwater animals that look like miniature octopuses. While humans and our sad excuse of a body grows weaker with age, the Hydra is just as strong plain bingo as when it graduated high school. In other words, they show no signs of aging nor the adverse effects commonly associated with it. While its regenerative properties are poorly understood, the hope is for an improved understanding to aid in our quest for human immortality. Other creatures exhibiting some form of biological immortality include various species of jellyfish, lobsters, and flatworms. Wait, lobsters are immortal? Jesus, I mean, I cooked enough lobsters in my three years in the United States while working for a clam company, clam bake company, where it's like, okay, I've taken enough immortal lives, huh? What about you, motherfuckers? Your boys killed immortals. <laughs> There's a unit of measurement known as a micromort. The name is a portmanteau of the words micro and mortality and measures the probability of sudden death in any given context. One micromort means the probability of death is one in one million. For example, approximately one out of every 150,000 skydiving attempts in the US result in death. Which Wait, that number is so small, I was expecting more. Because, you know, you jump off from a plane and hope that so oh, my parachute works. And movies thought that the parachutes don't work that well, but yeah. That number is very small. Means that skydiving is rated at roughly 7 micromorts per jump. In order to be exposed to 1 micromort of risk, you would have to ride a bike for 10 kilometers. So if you ride your bike for 70 kilo kilometers, it's the same as jumping off a plane with a parachute. So drive a car for 400 kilometers, or fly with commercial airlines for 10,000 kilometers. So driving a motorcycle is 40 times more dangerous than driving a car. The car for 400 kilometers or fly with commercial airlines for 10,000 kilometers. Doing something as simple as getting out of bed at 90 years of age will expose you to a daily dose of over 300 microvolts. The deadliest job in America is said to be the presidency, which clocks in at a staggering 186,000 microvolts which is why I decided to make videos on the internet instead. <laughs> in most cultures, death is associated with a specific person- Hey, listen, listen, listen. If I die and death rolls up on me with this retarded ass looking donkey, I'ma be, I'm be very angry, okay? What is this motherfucker? Look at this. In most cultures- Look at its face, bro. 
Look at it. it has three teeth in its mouth. Look at that face. What that come on, bro? Look at how many people they eat here. Can't you just gather up some money for a better donkey? Maybe a horse? What the hell is that thing? Death is associated with a specific personification and commonly takes the shape of the Grim Reaper, a skeleton cloaked in a dark robe carrying a scythe used to reap the souls of the dead. But some ancient cultures personified death in a much less menacing fashion. For Baby. example, the ancient Greeks worshipped a god of death known as Thanatos. Ah, he was often Thanatos. depicted as a bearded man or a child with wings that merely guided the human soul into the afterlife. Bro, if you, look, if you, if you meet this dude in the street, don't let him guide you anywhere. Okay, this is gonna be a white bus. In other words, a psychopomp. The Egyptian god Osiris was depicted as a man with green skin and was more often revered than feared. This modern depiction of a menacing skeleton or demon can largely be attributed to the Spooky, most devastating scary, pandemic skeletons. humanity has ever faced, the Black, the Black Death. Oh, this horrifying medieval plague may have reduced the European population by as much as 60% and consequently gave rise to a more dismal depiction of the Grim Reaper as to more accurately reflect the hopelessness and dismality of this plague. Well, most depictions at least, sometimes death is just ecstatic to play some mortal board games. Just look at that face. That is the face of a skeleton ready to play some chess. There's a rare mental disorder known as Qatar syndrome, and persons afflicted often deny the existence of one or multiple body parts, but in some extreme cases patients deny that they themselves exist, and paradoxically come to believe that they are dead. Named after French neurologist Jules Qatar, in 1880 he described a middle-aged woman who believed Oh, is this a, a lot of the, of the rappers nowadays? I'm already dead. Her body Can't was I? completely hollow, with the exception of her skin and bones. As such, she insisted she didn't need to eat and eventually died of starvation. Strangely enough, I victims of this wrong. disorder often believe themselves to be immortal, as from their delusional perspective, you can't die if you're already dead. Can't really argue with that logic. A more recent um. case from 2012 describes a man who, after suffering a stroke, grew convinced he was dead. He told his doctor, I, I guess I'm dead. I'd like to ask for your opinion. But when asked if he believed it possible for a dead man to speak, he recognized the contradiction, yet paradoxically maintained his belief of non-existence. He further elaborated, I feel I am dead, but I'm talking with you in this world. I do not know whether I am alive or not. What does dead feel like? I am unable like? to realize that I am alive. A few months later, his condition fortunately improved and he no longer believed himself to be dead, yet he maintained that he once had been. Oh, and he also believed that Kim Jong-il was a patient at the same hospital. Naturally. Naturally. In 2007, a middle-aged man in Bosnia decided to fake his own oh, death Bosnia. in an effort to uncover how many friends and family members would attend his funeral. Unfortunately for him, only one person attended his fake service, and that person was his mother. I mean, think, okay, listen, if you're a big enough dick to do this thing, probably not a lot of people are gonna go to your funeral, okay? Let's be honest, so, I mean, I don't know what he was expecting. The thing is, this is a quite common fear, because no one wants to die alone, and if no one attends your funeral, then that's likely to have been the case. Actually, I'm surprised there isn't a specific phobia for dying alone, so let's create one. Okay, thanatophobia is the fear of dying, and monophobia is the fear of being alone. So naturally, monatophobia is the fear of dying alone. Anyway, the fear- This can never happen to me because I got my body pillow. Ah, yeah, yeah. The fear of a lack of funeral attendees is so common that in the UK you can preemptively pay a company known as Rent a Mourner to have random persons attend your funeral and act as if they mourn your passing. UK, what the fuck? Is this is this why Brexit had to come? Is it is this why y'all left us? Is this why? In early 1921, an American named Thomas Bradford decided he was going to prove the existence of an afterlife. 
In order to realize such an impossible task, Bradford reasoned that the most logical course of action would be for him to commit suicide and then communicate the existence of an afterlife from beyond the grave. He began by publishing a newspaper Big advert brain. in search for a spiritualistic accomplice that would remain alive and wait for the spirit of Bradford to return from the dead, thus undeniably ascertain a different plane of existence. A foolproof plan, or at least... Okay, um, buddy, if it was that simple, if we would all have ghosts around us. It would be very... It would be very hard to find a person who has, well, once you're born, you obviously have a mother and a father. Unless you don't know them, you probably have ghosts that have died at some point, okay? Because they had a mother and a father as well, and, you know, the fucking script goes... If it was that easy, oh, ghost, come here, brother, you died yesterday, what's up? How's the afterlife? A woman named Ruth Doran thought so as she quickly responded Damn, to Bradford's... Damn, this bitch lived a long ass time. Adverb. Jesus. After a few meetings of what I can only imagine must have consisted of intense scrutinization of this ingenious plan, <laughs> Bradford took his own life on the 5th of February, 1921. Why does his... look like a dick? Like the bush of the balls and the dick is not that big but it exists. With the full intention of returning to this plane of existence and relay any juicy details about the juicy world beyond details. to his lively accomplice. A week later, Doran claimed she had actually been in contact with the ghost of Bradford. Mm. And this is some of what he had to say. Oh, he, he, I am the professor who speak to you from the beyond. I have broken through the veil. I woke up and at first did not realize that I had passed on. Mm. I find no great change apparent. I expected things to be much different. They are not. Human forms are retained in outline, but not the physical. I have not traveled far, I am still much in the darkness. I see many persons, they appear natural. There is a lightness of responsibility here unlike in life. One feels full of rapture and happiness. Make of that what you will. Hey listen, if anyone wants to do this shit and donate a house and uh, your bank account and all that shit, let your boy know. I'ma talk to your spirit any day of the week, okay? As previously mentioned, a complete lack of brain activity is, according to modern medical science, the point of no return. Once your brain dies, there is no chance of revival. But some disagrees with this view of death and argues that as long as the brain is left intact, it should be possible to restore brain activity at a later date. At least, theoretically. While no one has ever returned from complete brain cessation, it is plausible that future medical advances could allow for that to happen. And this mere plausibility is enough for some individuals to literally put their body on ice in the hopes that in the future they can be unfrozen and resurrected. A practice known as cryonics. The first person to be cryo- Okay, I don't understand this. Listen, you are born, you have a life. Why? Like, what are you expecting the future to be so different that, unless you're just curious, what are you expecting to be so different that your life has more meaning or you're happier in the future? Like, even if technology is a lot more advanced, technology doesn't necessarily make us happier, right? Because it's like, hey, shit happens. Hey, congrats, you have medicine that is going to cure a disease you probably don't have. Congratulations, are you happier? Probably not. What's the point of this shit? I don't understand. Just live your fucking life, do your shit and die, brother. Fuck me, come on. Who preserved was an American by the name of James Bedford, who in 1967 died of cancer and was subsequently frozen. Over 250 individuals have since undergone this expensive procedure and thousands more plan on joining them. My boy looks like something you put in your refrigerator after you cooked it to save it for tomorrow. What the fuck is this shit? The question is, Jesus. is this a form of suspended animation or a freezer for corpses? In 2016, scientists successfully restored a frozen rabbit brain to near perfect condition. And demonstrated oh, that dude should be happy in a hundred years? Okay, less than a hundred. 1967 or whatever? In like 60 years since he was uh, frozen, we, we resurrected a rabbit, bruh. Uh, congratulations, give us another 200, 300 years and you'll be back. 
demonstrating that sub zero preservation is feasible. But the next issue is revival. While some microscopic animals have successfully been frozen, unfrozen, and revived, larger mammals like ourselves are significantly more complex. In any case, cryonics is currently one of the most plausible methods of escaping death. So while there is some tangible hope for the future to save us from the cruelty of non-existence, the present will, for the time being, remain a dystopian netherworld filled with pain, suffering, Denmark death, and despair. My boy needs to invest in a better cloak. That shit looking kind of bummy. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know what y'all think about that. Would you actually uh, freeze yourselves at some point? Like, would you do that shit? Would you freeze your fucking bodies and hope that in the future we have um, resolved our mortal, you know, problems and we can become clinically immortal you know someone may shoot you in the head again but it's like you know that shit happens <laughs> let me know what y'all think about that i'm curious uh anyway this was top 10 facts about dead by limino like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time everybody have a nice fucking day